Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamey Daddy channel where we talk about video games and thank you for joining me on this small journey where I'm trying to make the transition from understanding game development from the side of the gamer and looking at it from the perspective of the developer. And this has led me into picking uh, a hobby, a side hobby to learn Unreal Engine 4. Now, this video is a video on why I picked Unreal Engine 4 as the engine to start learning with. And uh, I know there are many of these videos on the internet on which engine is the best and all that stuff. And when you watch all those videos, I'm just gonna spoil it for you. At the end of them, they're gonna tell you, at the end of the day, you have to pick an engine that you feel is best for you. You have to do your research and go with whichever, whichever one you want. There really isn't a best, in quote, game engine out there. It's all about many factors that I'm telling you, even me, myself, I didn't even consider. And after picking Unreal, I felt, man, I'm glad I actually went with this choice. So primarily, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my extreme level of research allowed for me to pick this engine because I thought it was the best for me. Actually, I picked it out of sentiment. It's a sentimental engine for me. Now, you may ask and say, well, what do you mean by sentimental engine? Simple. I'll answer for you. All right. So if you look at my Steam library, here, you would notice that, you know, like a lot of people who get into a Steam library or go into PC gaming, you have all these games that you'll never play. But if you kind of like examine further, even those people that tell you they have a bunch of games they don't play, they still have a series or a handful of games that they do play. What I noticed was the trend within the games that I did play were games that were developed using the Unreal Engine. Granted, they were using the Unreal Engine 3 or what they called the Unreal Engine UDK which is an Unreal Engine development kit at the time that that was a thing and big development studios usually were the ones who had access to them. So Batman Arkham City, my one of my, I wouldn't say my all time favorite because it's kind of a tie. One of my all time favorite games ever. This is this is a, a favorite for me. Now, you know, notice I have only 71 hours, but this is my PC account. You cannot account for the time I blew on Xbox, on the Xbox 360 and even on my PlayStation 4 version of this particular game. I have spent a lot of time playing this and I enjoy the game so well. Arkham Origins is also another favorite of mine. I just remember this game being so cute in a way, in a weird way. And I say cute because another studio took over the reins of the game using a lot of what they had received from the studio that made Arkham City to kind of reverse engineer and make their own iteration of a prequel. But it was also made on the Unreal Engine and I enjoyed the way the game worked and I enjoyed everything about the game. And then came Batman Arkham Knight, which I overall just can't tell you how much this game has been impactful to my understanding of games and kind of my experience with combat in video games and how much I admire the work that Rocksteady did here to the point where I played this game for numerous hours. So you already see the trend. If you don't even still see the trend, you have to come over to Mortal Kombat 11, <laughs> which is a game that's made by NetherRealm Studios. NetherRealm Studios is a prolific combat fighting game studio. They've been in the business for a while. I think they've changed names. And here on Mortal Kombat 11, it's no, it's a, it's an it's just it's a no brainer. I mean, this is also another game that's been made on this engine that I do uh, or I do play till date. I play on the PlayStation more anyways. This was the days I started playing on PC and was learning and I did rack up a bunch of hours, a lot of it AI farming uh, and stuff. But still, though, those are still my hours because you got to still be there if you're going to be AI farming. And then it goes on to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, another game that I've also spent a lot of time playing. And I can go on with the list of other games that I enjoy, even though I don't play them, uh, you know, I would say religiously that are still games that I enjoy watching or being a part of its community, like the Tekken games and the Tekken community. And so that was the main reason I picked the Unreal Engine. And that was it. Now, if you ask me, did I go ahead and look at Unity? Did I go ahead and look at other uh, engines? Um, I did actually. I actually kind of started uh, researching using Unity because there was a very huge or still is a huge YouTube channel uh, called Brackies. And the YouTube channel actually right now, the creator actually quit. Uh, well, I didn't say quit. They moved on to other things. They made a goodbye video after having so many subscribers and have done this for so many years. They kind of left the art and said they wanted to go do some more exciting things, which I thought was quite respectful. So that was my first exposure. But then I realized that, you know, I didn't necessarily resonate with, uh, you know, Unity. And I didn't think I would have enough sentiment and interest to continue game development if I stuck on it. 
I'm a sentimental person. Those of you who've known me from coverage of the division, you know I am a sentimental person. I have stuck with this game through thick and thin, regardless of its strengths and weaknesses. It is a game that resonates with me, and I usually stick with what I feel resonates with me just because, um, I don't know, maybe you call me a loyalist or something. Uh, it, whatever it is you want to call me, uh, it doesn't matter. And so I decided, you know, if it's a game engine that I've enjoyed a lot of its games, why not continue to, you know, try and see and learn? And it's continued to give me more of an appreciation and even more of a, I would say, encouragement and sometimes excitement when video games are released on the engine. Uh, just recently, uh, from the time I'm recording this video anyways, you should be seeing the date at the, as the 20 something of uh, uh, April, but the video is going to be released later down the road. Outriders is a game that came out using the Unreal Engine 4, which is now, you know, different from the SDK, which many of the games I pointed out were made on. Uh, and Outriders was a very, you know, interesting release for me. I was able to kind of look at that game and look at a lot of the perspectives within which they made and developed a lot of their designs. And it's been very nice to watch and see that, oh, some of these things are things that I do know how some of them are executed. Now, granted, a lot of things I am still quite unaware of how they were done. But still, I mean, that doesn't mean that, you know, I can't celebrate the things that I know as not just a, you know, a gamer, but also as somebody who discusses video games, somebody who looks further and further into why, you know, these video games are, you know, made the way that they're made. And then if you were to say, ask me, but what about, you know, the aspect of, um, you know, learning or ease of use or understanding the engine, how easy is it to be able to pick up, you know, Unreal Engine? I cannot answer for Unity. So this video is, is again, titled the way I did title it as to why I picked the Unreal Engine. Uh, and I will say with ease of use, the Unreal Engine, um, I don't know what to compare it with, you know? So if you ask me ease of use, I can only tell you from my experience that, first of all, there is a lot of information out there. There are people who've been successful, uh, or I will say teams who've been successful in making their own games uh, using the engine. And now more than ever, there is a shift happening. Now, I've, I know this from doing some research that Unity has a lot more uh, indie dev support because the community is big and unity had always been the more indie dev friendly game engine for the longest time. Unreal engine, on the other hand, was the more corporate developer friendly engine. That's with the Unreal Development Kit and stuff. So a lot of the information was not necessarily available for indie developers in the past few years. But somewhere around 2014, 2015, from the YouTube videos I've seen from forum posts, it appeared that Unreal Engine and Epic Games started to try to reach out with Unreal Engine 4. They wanted to use that as an initiative to reach out to independent developers. And so that database of information, the forums and even the community has started to grow. Because, yes, we can talk about ease of use all day, but if we cannot highlight the importance of the community themselves, then it really does make no sense as to, you know, how you're going to get any help from anybody because <laughs> there are questions that you're going to have that cannot be resolved or solved by, you know, the by just, you know, I would say watching YouTube videos. So one of the things that you can do is you can really go into the Unreal Engine, um, you know, forums and you can go into the documentation and you can read about a whole lot of stuff. And that has been growing for the past few years. I've seen a lot of developers get frustrated and say that, you know, on reading comments and I'll say that it, it hasn't grown fast enough. Now, I wouldn't know because I'm still a learner. So I'm still at the bottom of the totem pole. So for me, everything is already a lot. So I already see a lot of potential on here. But if the growth is still happening, I believe that that gives me a lot of confidence to continue to, you know, research and continue to learn because I believe that if that growth continues, then it's going to continue to happen. And now even more independent games are, are starting to take root uh, and develop on, you know, on the engine. There was the other game called Blue Fire. It was a small independent game that was released uh, somewhere in March or February or so. And it didn't really get a lot of exposure, but I got a copy and I was so excited to play it. And it was actually a solid game. It it uh, it really impressed me as to how they, you know, they did the game. And I was quite excited about it. Then there was also another indie game that actually did very well. 
uh, you know, it was a small studio. They got a publisher, you know, funding and all that. And they were able to make a Dark Souls like, oh, I say Dark Souls, a Souls like game, which is called Mortal Shell. So for those of you who've played Mortal Shell, that's also another game that was developed using the Unreal Engine 4. And Mortal Shell was a success because it came out right around when everybody was locked down at home. A lot of games got postponed. So I think that paved the way for them to be able to get an opportunity to head, you know, get their voices heard. And they've also done uh, kind of an initiative that Unreal Engine had them do where they came out on a four hour developer stream and showed a lot of their processes. So it was nice to actually see game files for a live game, even though we didn't see too much. For me, four hours felt like four minutes because all I just did was with my jaw dropped, I was just watching and soaking in a lot of this information. So that's also been really interesting to see how Unreal Engine is now getting more and more indie friendly. Now, I wish I could take some more of your time to discuss why I believe that Unreal Engine is making these moves, but I can only just state a very brief uh, analysis as to why. Now, one of the things I usually do in, in my channel is I usually talk about these things from a financial perspective. I genuinely believe that Epic Games is trying to make the move to take on the indie games market. And because of the way their profit sharing methodology works, it's one of the more generous profit sharing methodologies. And what I mean is the Unreal Engine is free for creators. And if you were to want to make your game a project, it is free subject to your first one million dollars of sales. The moment you make your first million dollars, then you start paying them 4% of your, I think your sales or revenue. I can't, I can't remember exactly the wording. Don't quote me, but that gives, you know, gamers and developers incentives to say, yo, you know, everything all through our first million is all ours. And then we can start profit sharing. Unity doesn't really have that profit sharing methodology. They have a smaller version, which is also kind of generous, nothing wrong with it. But I think Epic Games is doing it to increase their libraries as well as increase the games that are being developed on and with their platforms. So they have a lot of interest vested here. If more games are released and more games are successful, then there are more four percentage share products out there in the market. It's very easy. That way they don't have to always spend all that time securing a lot of the exclusives which by the way, they spent about $330 million this year or this past year was reported that they made a $330 million loss on acquiring exclusives. I wouldn't call it a loss. I'll call it an investment because that's usually what these businesses would do. They'll spend a whole bunch of stuff doing that and <laughs> you'll see pretty much, you know, why I would call it an investment in that sense. So I think they're doing that to buttress a lot of their, uh, you know, their share in, in games that are developed on that platform in order for them to continue to grow big. Uh, I don't know if this is something that they want to be exposed out there, but it's obvious that they're doing this. Uh, you know, they're also in a, in a sense, allowing for a lot of tools to be available to, uh, you know, developers that are using this platform. So when you think about how generous it all is, you have to understand that there's an end goal in mind to kind of give them continued relevance in the market. One day Fortnite's gonna go away. It's gonna it's gonna be irrelevant. There's gonna be the new thing in the block. There's gonna be a new fad that everybody chases. And if they happen to not be at the forefront of it, then you know it means that they're going to pretty much lose out. Uh, you know, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to hedge their position for the future. And even the um, you know the head of Epic Games right now, I think he's now taking the role of a visionary, and that's exactly what he's doing. They are pumping in resources to the indie developer and even not just in the develop in the developer community, but also uh, you know the educator community. So these are steps that they're taking that I wish I could really sit down and break down in more detail. Uh, but again, I just wanted to try my best to see if I can answer the question as to why I decided to go this route. Um, now, if you ask me, is this the best route for you to go? I'll tell you, I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, you still have to do your own research. And I have to tell you, I've I also had some frustrations as well on the engine. There are systems in the engine that are not the most user friendly or in the sense that I have not discovered the information to make them user friendly. A lot of the initial exposure to those systems that they did uh, tutorials and did uh, lectures and all on are buried within the YouTube algorithm because there are things that have been done since 2014, 2015. So when you think about, you know, five, six years, the YouTube algorithm does not really bring those videos up for viewing only until unless maybe one day the algorithm is like kind of guessing and then it pops it up on your way. Or if you want to take the time to scroll through their YouTube channel, then you might be fortunate to find those videos or through forums or through links. Whew.
I think I'm out of breath. <laughs> we'll continue this discussion on the next devlog. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys a lot. Leave comments. Talk to me. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. This is really exciting to be able to kind of look at the back end of what I've been working and talking about for the past four years. And I'm really excited to continue to just discuss all of this with you guys. But we'll talk in another video. Thank you so much. Uh, peace out.